Welcome in, guys. We have a nice little small Thursday card on this slate here. Been an up and down week. Started off good, coming off a little rough yesterday. Some tough games that were back and forth a little bit early on with Colorado. Couldn't pull that one out. Uh, and then that kind of set us for the course of the evening. A couple of losers in the evening, winners in the morning. Uh, hopefully today can be a better day. Already a handful of bets uh, out to members currently and a couple other spots we're looking at. Once again, Sharps uh, going against some of the sides we're looking at. So we'll see how high they'll take those numbers. John, uh, how you doing today? Miserable. Uh, in, a, in a bad streak, I usually absolutely crush uh, Major League Baseball after the All-Star break. It's been a tough year. It's just been a different year. We're going to talk about some stats uh, after we go over today's card. And what's made this year different, obviously, uh, rule changes have come into effect. But we adapt and just don't seem to be getting uh, the breaks. Um, yesterday started good. Uh, had a big dog with the Tigers. We'll get that win. Uh, when the other – what was the other uh, afternoon winner we had? Um, Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay. A uh, late winner. Just uh, San Fran in a terrible spot. We bet against the sharp money there. They were betting San Fran in a third straight uh, bullpen game. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we had Colorado, which was our uh, two-unit bet. Uh, really late Gomber for the first time in a while. He actually let us down there. He got hit hard. Come back to take the lead, but just not enough. Arizona showed resolve. And maybe turning it around, going into this big series, this big weekend uh, series at San Diego that starts tonight that we have a bet on. We'll talk more about that. But uh, nighttime. Uh, back into the buzzsaw, that's the, the L.A. Dodgers. Uh, right now, you cannot buck them. They're just playing great. Uh, just uh, plus 200, another huge number. was worth the take, uh, we felt, last night uh, for, for a one-unit bet. And our big bet, the Orioles, uh, Snell, um, Snell and Kershaw. We bet against those two pitches. And part of the reason is, and right to the script, Kershaw went five innings. But it was enough. Uh, so, yeah. Kershaw, at that number, you want to get more than just five innings. Same thing with Snell. Five, six innings. Six innings is a max. That's what he gave you last night. But, again, they were just good enough to get there. So, uh, when the day started good and promising, looked like it could be an actual sweep in the afternoon. Turns out to be another tough day. Uh, back at it today. Uh, two bets in already. Definitely at least one more. Just we'll see where the lines go. And that's how it goes, guys. If a small... Uh, small eight-game card uh, or six-game card like today. We may have bets on half the card. Then you get a big 15-game card, maybe this is one bet. It's just wherever we feel the edges are. So we think we got some today, and let's get started. We'll talk about it, bud. Yeah, this top game is a couple of teams that were supposed to be in the playoff mix this time of year, and instead uh, both ended up big-time sellers at the deadline. We had the Mets versus the Cardinals. Uh, it's going to be Quintana versus Wainwright. Quintana actually started last season with St. Louis, then get dealt at the deadline. Uh, we'll see what happens here. This is uh, Mets. For, sorry, sorry with Pittsburgh, got dealt to St. Louis. This uh, Mets team here, they win three or four at the end of this homestand. They went five and five in the homestand, just one and nine, their last 10 on the road. Uh, meanwhile, St. Louis, they started looking at their putting it together. Then they ran into Blackburn yesterday, got blanked, uh, but they still won three or four here. Their second worst home team in the National League. Quintana's been terrific. I mean, Mets have lost all five of his starts. Last four all quality starts. Last two of those against the Braves and the Orioles. Best NLT, best AL team. I mean, that's as good as you can get there. Allowed three runs in 12 innings versus those two teams. Uh, and then Wayne has just been the exact opposite. I mean, his last start was really just sad to watch, honestly. 15 runs, 18 hits in four innings his last two times out. Uh, last time only lasted an inning. Couldn't get an out in the second inning versus Kansas City. Gave up nine there. Just really tough. Uh, it, just dead arm, just complete fall off. Career's over. Trying to get to the end of the season here. Maybe add a win or two. Pitching mismatch here with Quintana. Do you want to back him? One and nine Mets team on the road is the question here. Uh, this is Mets or Nova. I mean, Wainwright is looking that bad right now. I think I'd lay anything up to 200 here. He's just absolute batting practice. Kansas City was making a joke of him. Yeah, Ben, the uh, shops agree with you. They took this game from minus 110 on the overnight. Uh, it's as high as 135 right now. So they've buried the Mets. But the only reason I didn't jump in was for exactly what you said. Do I want to back a Met team that's lost nine of their last ten road games, um, even against Wainwright? And Wayne, Wainwright's been horrible. Uh, in the preview, I actually wrote, uh, in two August starts, has been obliterated. Um, so just saying pitch poll just doesn't describe how bad he is. 
we've been talking about it all year. I uh, should have retired with Yachty. Uh, the, 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 the battery that's got the most uh, games uh, pitched in court uh, by the same person. Um, so overstayed is welcome, and he's paying for it now. Uh, still Mets are nobody, but again, they don't want to lay this price. And now the cat, uh, the horse has left the barn at minus 135. This would be an overlay. Again, Mets on the road. Cards play at home. Um, couldn't lay it, but want no part of this home dog. Usually a home dog guy. Don't want no part of Wainwright. Then we have D-backs at San Diego. Two teams who are just on the outside cusp of the wild card race right now. This is another road team with a massive pitching mismatch. Uh, right now you have Arizona one and a half games back in the wild card. Padres four and a half games back in the wild card. Interesting the odds on them to make the playoffs. You guys check out on DraftKings. They currently have Padres plus 350, Arizona plus 310. So only a 40 cents difference there with the three game edge for Arizona currently. But like we said, the books and the Sharps, they've been betting Padres a lot. They're high on San Diego. They have been all season long. We'll see if there's a late push here. Gallon versus Hill today. Gallon's just been terrific in August. Three, you know, all three quality starts, 1-0, 2.37. He does have a drop-off when he goes on the road. He has uh, almost a five-year array on the road this season. But against San Diego, still solid, 2-0, 1.89. And then it's against Rich Hill, just the journeyman here. Uh, back end in, in ERA. And at whip, he's bottom five in both. Uh, and last two starts, gave up nine runs and six in a third. So another massive pitching mismatch. Uh, Arizona, they were really cold. And then you said it earlier, are they turning around here? San Diego, they win two, last two against the best team in the AL, well, the best road team in the AL. They pulled that out against Baltimore, still three and seven their last 10. Two teams trying to turn it around. Got to look at the ace here with Gallon, who's uh, in a Cy Young competition for a reason. Yeah, uh, pitching mismatch to say the least. Hill, 62nd out of 63 eligible pitches with a 1.51 whip. That means a lot of guys on base. And 59th uh, with a 5.17 ERA. So at 63 eligible pitches, to be eligible, you have to have enough innings to be to pitch. Um, Galen, take away some road struggles, which his last couple on the road haven't been that bad. Two of those starts here in August. Pitching much better, has pitched real well against the Padres. This is one of your better pitches. A win today ties him for the major league lead and wins uh, against one of your worst. Uh, this game opened minus 125 Arizona overnight. And as they've been doing every day, the Sharps are on the Padres. So they've got the Padres rated much higher than they are. Uh, neither team playing well. Both seem to be turning around a little bit for this stretch run. But a pick em game, give me the mismatch pitcher, a much better pitcher who's had success on the road. Padres not lighting it up at home. Uh, I'll take Gallon and the Diamondbacks in this one at a pick. Yeah, and so you guys know, as far as eligible pitchers, it's just the amount of innings as your team has played games. So if your team's played 120 games, you're going to have at least 120 innings under your belt there. Uh, but then we don't want to confuse everybody because by saying there's 63 eligible pitchers at, you know, uh, obviously you get about five pitchers for each staff, but there's more, uh, 30 teams, it's 150 starting pitchers at least. But most of those pitches don't meet the requirements. That's why I was saying 63 eligible pitches. Oh, either way you cut it, Hill <laughs> is horrible. Let's talk about his uh, career against the, the Padres. He's, and it's been a long career. He's 43 years old. Uh, one and nine, 6.29 ERA, 14 career starts. Uh, beat up against them twice this year. Just don't want Hill. Give me Galen. Then we have Brewers against the Juggernaut Dodgers right now. Dodgers make it 10 in a row, scoring over six a game, hitting 296 right now, just absolutely killing the ball. Uh, and then you have this Milwaukee team who came in winning three straight. They've now dropped the first two. They're hitting just 185 on this trip. Uh, Burns versus Lynn. Now, Lynn's going to be an interesting read here. Lynn, uh, prior to coming to the Dodgers was shit. Obviously, coming to L.A., uh, you obviously go to a pitcher-friendly ballpark. That's going to help out a little bit. The competition he's faced is going to help out a little bit. Oakland, White Sox, Colorado, all teams in that bottom six space. So maybe that's part of it. 3-0, 2.00 ERA against those three teams. Um, saw a nice little report about, I mean, there was the comments that Verlander made about the Mets and how their analytic department wasn't as good as Houston. And uh, apparently that's a big part of here, what's going on with Lance Lynn. It's just the analytic departments, the way they're using them, the way they're using their pitch count, uh, everything else uh, is helping him. So we'll see here against a bit better of a team like Milwaukee, if he can continue doing what he has. Burns, who's on a terrific stretch, seven straight quality starts, now gets roughed up a little bit his last time out for five runs and five and two thirds versus the White Sox. 
and he has horrible numbers against the Dodgers last season. Gave up 10 runs and nine and a third, only seven earned. Want to bet Burns here? Want to take, you know, one of the better pitchers in baseball at a dog price? It's just tough. Can't go against Dodgers 10 in a row. Lynn's been impressive. Um, and then, yes, Milwaukee, one of your better teams, but really not offensively. They typically get it done with the pitching. So Lynn might be able to continue his dominance. Uh, just tough to go against here. Would be a slightest of leans to Burns and the Brewers, but staying away from this team. Yeah. Um, Brewers are a better team than the teams you mentioned, but let's take a look at it. So San Diego, they're 20th in team hitting. Um, this is These are the three teams that Lynn has faced since coming over. Colorado, Forget their overall numbers. He faced them in Dodger Stadium. On the road, Rockies are the 29th, uh, 29th in scoring on the road. And then, obviously, the A's, the worst hitting team in baseball. Milwaukee, just not that much better. Brewers are 28th in team batting average. Um, Burns roughed up his last time out. That was against the White Sox team. Linders look better. It's Dodger Stadium. Just right now, Dodgers are on fire. Don't, don't jump in front of a bus and this is a this is a bus right now 10 straight wins i believe it's 14 of their last 15 they're red hot uh, mookie betts and freeman both three hits last night at the top of the lineup uh, i'm just staying away from this dodgers are showing uh, they're making a statement here in this stretch run uh to face off against the braves in the uh nld and nlcs this year and we have Mariners at Kansas City. M's get a win last night, 6-5. They lead the series 2-1. They won six of the last nine meetings, and they're going to have another big pitching mismatch today. It's kind of the theme with these road teams so far. Kirby versus Zerpa. Uh, Kirby leads MLB with whip and uh, K-walk ratios. Last three starts, 1-0, .86. Last time out, nine shutout innings. Seattle still couldn't get it done against Baltimore, and uh, Zerpa making his first start. This is uh, – as big of a pitching mismatch as we have on the card, and we have a bunch of those. So tough to go even look at Kansas City. Yes, it's a big home dog. You have Seattle, who just one game back from the wild card uh, with Toronto not playing today. It's just an opportunity for them to get another half game closer there. Uh, it's M's or nothing. I mean, I don't want to lay this price, but maybe look at the run line. I uh, can't lay Kansas City here. This pitching mismatch game means too much to Seattle. Currently, DraftKings has the Mariners plus 120 to make the playoffs. Is though another series with the Royals and two more with Oakland half game out if they get a win today. The only thing you got to be careful is Seattle goes to Houston. That's who knocked them out of the playoffs last year. That's who they've got to beat to get into the wild card. So the only thing you worry about here is a little bit of a look at pitching mismatch to say the least. Uh, on top of leading uh, MLB with a, a 1 0 whip. Um, and a, and a ridiculous, I mean, ridiculous, so almost a 10 uh, K to walk ratio, 131 to 14. Uh, he's also third with 17 quality starts, making a statement uh, for Cy Young, as far as I'm concerned. No. Um, you got McClanahan basically out now that his, his season's over. Uh, so pitching mismatch, uh, Perez is going to be out, just got that lineup for, for KC. So it's, it's Seattle. Or nobody, but again, I'm not. We don't lay this kind of favorites, especially they got a little bit of a look ahead game. Um, so yeah, no, no, no reason for us to be interested in KC. Kirby uh, currently plus five thousand on the Cy Young there race, which he could make. He could make a race down the stretch. We saw a uh, gallon at the back end of last season almost do that for Arizona. Ended up third in the voting there. Uh, Detroit at Cleveland next matchup we have. This Tigers team, they get it done for us yesterday. One of the winners, uh, two and three on this trip right now. Uh, and then Cleveland, they lose at Cincy. They went two and three on their trip, uh, hitting 281 this week, though. Bats picking up right now, scoring over five a game. Skewball versus Curry, pretty gross pitching matchup. Skewball is not allowed to earn run in his home starts on the road so far, though. Just three starts, 0-2, 9.64 ERA. Uh, so it's just been a handful of starts, small sample size, but it really has been night and day on the home and the road splits. Uh, last time out was roughed up at Boston for five runs. Did have two starts with Guardians last year, allowing just three runs in 12 innings. And then it's Curry here for the Guardians, who they're stretching back into a starter with all their handful of pitching injuries. Uh, for a while, he was just going three, four innings. Finally goes to a five-inning stretch, and the next time out tries to go five innings again. He does, but gives up five runs against Tampa Bay. Uh, so as, as they're extending him, trying to push him further into games, it seems like it's hindering him a little bit. Uh, has had some better home numbers. This is just a price that has gone one direction. All Detroit here. 
I get it. I, we like finding value in the Tigers, but betting them on a road favorite against a Cleveland team who needs wins still very much so in this division race, having a chance to beat up on one of the lower teams here in the AL. This is uh, home dog in Cleveland all the way. Biggest move of the overnight. Uh, this game opened at minus 105, a pick em, And this game is now, I, I, can't, I can't even get the words out of mouth. <laughs> Great, minus 135 on the road against a player. Still a playoff possibility, Cleveland Guardian team. 100%. Twins drop a game again yesterday. They may come back um, home, Cleveland, and let's get some runs going. Look, Detroit don't score, uh, and Cleveland doesn't score at home. So we got Detroit 28th scoring uh, under four runs a game. Uh, overall, three, I believe 3.98 runs per game. And Cleveland is 29th. Scoring 3.5 on runs per game at home. They hit just 231 versus left hand pitches. Low scoring game. Uh, don't expect much. School ball has been, has been terrible on the road. Now we expect that to even out uh, over a course of time. A small sample size, he said. But this game is just too big of a number. Uh, unless Ramirez, somebody's out for Cleveland. I don't know who else could be out besides Ramirez. Uh, but if he's out, Maybe it's worth it. I, other than that, we're going to be on the home dog. We're just waiting to see the apex of this game and the lineups. And then we have Red Sox at Washington to wrap up the short card today. A couple of veteran lefties, Chris Sale versus Patrick Corbin. Nats get it done last night, evened up the series. Boston had won the six prior meetings. Uh, Red Sox just three and seven, th three and seven, their last 10 road games. Nats 13 and three, their last 16 home games. Sale comes back from the IL. He was pretty good. Seven Ks, no walks. He did give up two runs in four and two thirds, but just off one hit, which to his luck was a home run. So uh, that's kind of how it went for him. Facing Nats back in 21, two runs in two and a third. Uh, Corbin, a couple of August starts. He's been solid. Three earned runs in 11 and a third. Four Ks, eight walks, though. That's a little bit concerning. Still big price here just for those two trends alone. Boston, three and seven, their last 10 road games. Nats 13 and three, their last 16 at home. Makes it tough here to make this number this high, especially knowing sales going to have a bit of a leash. Looking at another home dog or nothing here in this spot. Absolutely. Um, look, sale four and two thirds, his uh, first start back, the long history. And I hear the long history of being injured. Uh, wouldn't expect him to fit co to complete six innings. Uh, on the other hand, Corbin, um, just when you say that name, like, oh, you can't bet Corbin. He's horrible. Yeah. Corbin, <coughs> 61st out of 63 eligible starters with a, with a 1.50 whip. But he has somehow leads the Nationals in quality starts with 11. So it's almost half his starts. He gives you a quality start out there. As Ben said, decent in two starts out here in August. Uh, so with sales, only his second start back. Remember, Nationals eat lefties up. 277 versus lefties. They're playing better at home. Red Sox on the road, different team. They do not hit on the road. Batting 233 on the road, and they're scoring just 4.26 runs per game on the road. Big overlay. Uh, you could take a you could take a dollar sixty-five this morning. Home dog and nobody. Yeah, Corbin kind of the in inverse of what the Padres are a little bit. San Diego, they actually have a better run differential than Baltimore, but they just tend to do it all in one game. They get their big, massive wins. They put it up, and then, you know, the stats kind of even out there. So Corbin, yes, bad stats, but they come all in one game, uh, and then he does come with the good games here and there. So uh, it's, if, if you have a guy who 50% of his starts are good starts, then it's, you know, worth the back in there. Big price, home dog. Huge price. Uh what we wanted to talk about, because we got a little bit of time today, how, you know, just a, a little bit different of a year uh, with the rule changes and what the rule changes have done to the game. And obviously, they were, they were meant to do two things. One, more offense, and two, speed up games. Uh, so let's talk about the offense. And right now, you can go to the stats, go check it out on ESPN. You've got four pitchers, again, that qualify, that have enough innings to be eligible Four pitchers that have a sub 3.00 ERA. Last year, 19 pitchers finished the year with a sub 3.00 ERA. So you can see the difference there in runs uh, by the amount of pitchers that are pitching under three now. Uh, by the same token, and maybe even more informative, as we said, Kirby uh, leads uh, the, the league with a 1.00 whip. There are no pitches, obviously, with a lower whip. Last year, 10 pitches had a sub 
1.00 whip. So there's your change, and you can see it uh, just from the stats, and that's what stats tell us every day. That's what we bet off. We bet off the stats and numbers. Everything becomes math. Besides the game, it becomes math. It becomes numbers. Um, we look for spots. As we talked about today, Seattle uh, could be in a little look at now. Is that enough for them? They should be able to beat KC with this pitching mismatch, even though there's a possibility of a look ahead. But these are the things we're always looking at, and we we blend that in with the stats. This is how we make our bets. No, no throwing thoughts. We always use that expression. We'll put pulling names out of hats. What do you got to add with that, Ben? Yeah, I mean, just the opposite side of the spectrum with that. If you look at uh, team hitting stats, uh, last year only one team above 260 batting average at the end of the season. Granted, we still have another you know two months to go here, basically, but maybe a month and a half. Right now, you have seven teams above that 260 mark and two in the 270 range. So uh, just across the board, offense is up, pitching is down, and that's, like you said, what the objective was, what the rule change is. Games have sped up. Uh, really seeing it in the bullpens as well. I mean, it's just these guys don't have as much time to think coming out. The high pressure intensity, you don't have the time to step off the mound and really gather your breath. You have to go, 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 go. I think it was Bob Costas who made this mark a couple of years ago about how baseball is becoming more and more and more of a chess match, less of a game. And if you make it a chess match, you know, it's going to ruin it. So it is kind of bringing that element back to it as well. Uh, just as far as, like you said, the betting angle, definitely a bit of an adaptation to uh, adjust to that and, you know, kind of figure out where you're putting in your value and your probabilities. Yeah. No, I look at, we adapt with rule changes for years. NBA uh, takes the three point shooting line. on. we go. Three point shooting becomes more prevalent. Defense becomes less. You know, I, you can go back to the, to the eighties uh, when, when the Knicks and Bulls were playing scores in the high eighties, low nineties. So the errors change NFL, you used to be able to tackle a quarterback. Yeah, you can't touch him. Uh, you can't go, you can't hit him high, you can't hit him low, you can't do this. You can't. So we just constantly adapt to whatever the rule changes might be. Um, not going to use rule changes as an excuse, just pointing things out. The offense has picked up, pitching down. So we'll keep adjusting. Like our sides today, looking for a big weekend. Uh, get us plus, get us rolling towards the end of the year and still get this post all-star break. Uh, in a winning in a winning light by the end of the year. You guys know where to go. If you guys want all of the information, a couple weeks out here from both college ball and NFL, all those games and all those breakdowns will be up on the How to Beat the Bookie app, or you can sign up on the website, howtobeatthebookie.com. If you guys want to get all of that info there. Uh, and yeah, like a few weeks away from football, guys. That prep's starting now, and you get all the information for the same price. John, up and down week, and hopefully we can uh, head into a big weekend here. Yeah, we'll be looking for that. We'll uh, try to... Figure out the unexplainable. Uh, one of those games last night we looked at was uh, Angels at Texas. Um, Detmers had been absolutely awful, or awful last few starts, awful against Texas. Mm -hmm. Texas crushes lefties. So obviously he was throwing a no hitter late to the game. Um, Gray, which I was, it's good to see Gray now putting two good starts back to back. We chronicled uh, Gray having a great start. And then having a complete game against the Cardinals, developing a blister, missing his next start, and then uh, had been absolutely horrible in six starts after that. But now two good starts back-to-back. -back. Ed Shearzer, Montgomery at the trade deadline. If Yavaldi could come back uh, from his injury, he's been an injury and he's pitching phenomenal. Dunning's been pitching good baseball for you. All of a sudden, you got a real nice staff. And that just may change my mind. I had been touting Houston. Um, to once again take over. It looks like they're on their way. They went into Miami, took care of business down there, except for the first game we bet against them. We got the money with the Marlins. Uh, here comes Houston, but maybe Texas with Gray, and if you have all comes back, just have enough pitching, as Houston's pitching has been struggling a little bit. So uh, just to point out uh, what's been going on with that Texas-Houston battle, we're back at it today. Short card, uh, and we'll be back here tomorrow. Make sure you guys tune in Monday through Friday, 1 o'clock Eastern. Like, comment, subscribe. Let's make some money, John. Let's make some money.